Well, I did it guys. I finally lost the last 20 pounds and reached my goal weight of 125 pounds. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how I lost the weight and really when I started, cause I lost 20 pounds recently, but in total since my journey began, it's been about almost 40 pounds. And I'm also gonna tell you the result of my two week weight loss challenge. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the One Year 100 Pounds podcast. My name is Whitney Holcomb and I am author of the book, One Year 100 Pounds. For those of you who are new here, I lost 100 pounds on my own when I was 14 years old and I've pretty much kept it off for almost 20 years. My book, One Year 100 Pounds, is about my weight loss story and how it really transformed my life. Um, it's also a tough love weight loss guide for you if you are also on a weight loss journey yourself. So if you would like to check that out, I will leave the links below. But today we are talking about the long awaited weight loss video from my recent weight loss. And well, at least it's been long awaited for me because I've been at this for a while and I am so happy to say that I'm finally there. I reached my goal weight. Honestly, I haven't been this skinny since like my early 20s actually. So it's been a long time. So just a quick recap, I've talked about this in plenty of my other videos, but um, when I got to my early 20s, I ended up actually gaining some weight. Um, I was anywhere from like 140 to just, you know, recently back in 2021 and 2022, got up to 160 pounds. And I was really pretty much, yeah, I mean, in between 140, 150, all my 20s really. And even though I know that it's still in the healthy range for me and I know that weight fluctuations are normal, um, I just wasn't happy there and like I said in plenty of my previous videos um, they were still uh, my it was my mindset you know I was just in a weird place in my 20s um, and it wasn't really until my early 30s that I finally decided you know what I have to do something about this I no longer want to live in a body that I'm just not comfortable in so I finally did something about it so I guess we'll start back in like 20 like in the 2020 2021 um, this was around the COVID time. And I remember in 2020, like around that time, um, I was 140 pounds. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people actually gained weight during that time. I ended up losing some weight because I was just outside walking all the time. Um, I was staying with family in Virginia. I just moved from New York. It was a whole thing, but I was, yeah, I was able to walk a lot. I was, you know, working out a lot. Then came like, I guess towards the end of 2020, 2021 time, um, I moved to Florida and I, I moved to help out with family. Um, and I was living with more family in Florida and that was when things started to change or I started to gain weight. So I was living in a place where it was harder for me to get out and do normal walks. Um, and I was also exposed to the eating habits of those that I was staying with. And a lot of their eating habits was eating a lot of junk food, a lot of fast food, a lot of greasy foods, um, a lot of things that I really had not eaten in like years. Like I'm talking about like Pop-Tarts, going to like Pizza Hut, Boston Market, like things that like I hadn't eaten in years. Uh, it's not, that, not to say that I hadn't like eaten out in years. In New York, I was eating all the time. Um, I do think there's a difference between like eating stuff like that from restaurants versus stuff from like packages or from like the fast food restaurants. I think it just contains a lot more calories, number one, more grease, more sugar, more fat. Um, so it is different. And I definitely noticed the difference in how, you know, the addiction to cold, like when I was eating those things. Also in New York, I was doing a lot more working out and walking all the time. So I think that, you know, helped a lot. But yeah, like I said, I was eating a lot differently um, and not on purposely, but it was just, it was there, right? It was every single day, you know, they're bringing something home. Um, so I ended up eating it, ended up eating too much. Then there'd be leftovers. So I'd end up eating that the next day. And it just really started to pile on. And I wasn't getting as much exercise as I was before. Like I said, I couldn't walk as much. Um, I was still exercising. I was doing like, you know, 30, 40 minute, like, you know, high intensity workouts or lifting weights, which is probably what saved me from gaining even more weight. But even around then, I did start to notice that my workouts were just kind of sluggish. And I know a huge part of it had to do with my diet. Um, I was also drinking a lot around that time. Like I've also said before, I picked up some bad habits in New York City where it was just like, you know, you're going out and there's always, oh, you start with wine or a cocktail bar, then you go to another place and you have more wine. And it was just a habit that I was eating, drink, <laughs> eating wine, drinking wine um, almost every single night. So I really didn't have the healthiest eating and drinking habits. And this 
was affecting me, you know, I could tell now definitely um, fitness wise, it was affecting my sleep and it was making me eat more. So I packed on the weight pretty quickly. Like I think about it now, it's like in between that time period of late 2020, 21, going into 22, um, yeah, it was like 20 pounds because I went from 140 to 160. Even one day I hit like 165 just after like, I think it was a day of like too much eating, you know, and that was really wake up calling me because I was like, wow, like this, I yeah, something's got to change right now because this is just getting out of, out of control. And also keep in mind during this time too, I was also trained for a marathon. So, or I'm sorry, a half marathon. So I was doing a lot of running workouts. I was running a lot, um, but because I had to change my eating habits, I wasn't losing any weight. So that is the thing, it really matters what you are putting into your body versus how much you are expending because you can eat a lot more calories a lot more quickly than you can burn them. So like I had said before in many of my other videos, you know, I was never really happy at even 140 pounds. Um, you know, it, I had gained that weight as a result of like, you know, I'd been too skinny at one point. Um, like I said, I needed to gain some weight, but I gained back more than I wanted to. And it wasn't like I gained it back in like muscle or I gained it back from being fit. No, I gained it back from eating and drinking too much. Like I said too before, I just didn't have the healthiest habits in New York City. It was a lot of going out, a lot of drinking and eating, not getting a lot of sleep, which yeah, it led to me not really even feeling my best and not, to, at least for me, I'm not looking my best. Like I was not happy there. I was not happy at 140, definitely wasn't happy at 160. But it is kind of strange that even though I knew I wasn't really happy at that weight, um, especially at 160, I think I kind of had a little bit of weight blindness, if you know what I mean. I've heard people talk about it where it's like, I mean, I, I did know I didn't like that weight, but at the same time, I kept trying to like convince myself like, well, maybe it's muscle because I have more muscle than I've ever had before. Um, or, you know, oh, well, maybe it's really not that bad. And I don't know, it's just strange, you know, because I can look back on those pictures now and I'm like, oh, I was actually probably heavier even then than I thought. Um, and again, I'm not saying that I, I wasn't fat and I'm not saying like I hated myself at that time um, or even that I hate myself when I look back at those pictures, but I, it was just a rea reality check for me. Like that just wasn't my best. It wasn't where I felt my best. I did not look my best. I look a lot different compared to now and a few years ago. Um, and I also just have to say too, like, just because I did not like myself at 160 does not mean that you should not like yourself at that weight, um, even if you are my same height. I mean, look, like everyone, everybody is different. Everyone has like their own perfect weight. Everyone has different body compositions. We're all different like sizes and heights. So even though for me, like at my height, 5'8", 160 is still considered like, okay, healthy-ish. For me, it wasn't. Number one, because of the habits that got me there. Number two, like I was 160 pounds of basically pure fat. Like it, it wasn't muscle. Like I was hoping it was, it really wasn't, okay? So that's the thing too, body composition really matters. Like you could be 160, 5'8", and look super lean and toned and amazing because you're really fit, you have a lot of muscle. Um, that was not my case. On top of that, I am also, again, even though I am like technically taller than the average person or the average woman, I have a very small bone structure. Like you can just like tell, like I'm just, I, I have small bones, right? So I think I hold on to weight differently. It looks different on me and it is harder for me too, like carrying the extra weight around, which I can definitely feel the difference now. Um, just, you know, from like even 20 pounds ago, the difference in my workouts now, how much easier they are, how much lighter I feel, especially doing things like cardio. So it's amazing, you know, just losing that like 20 pounds, especially the 40 pounds, how much of a difference that makes for someone like me and my body type. But anyhow, let's get down to how I lost the weight. I guess it was 2022, had to have been 2022. We, I moved in with my boyfriend, now fiance, uh, to our new place. And it was a different place in Florida and I was able to get out more and, and walk more. I was just more motivated to start my health journey. Um, and like I said, I, I, this was just before I reached like that 165 pounds and I was like, oh yeah, no, something's gotta change. Like I've gotta do something. Um, so I, I did, I started just working out more, walking more. And I also tried something different than I had before, um, which was using the container system. So I did do a video about that actually, which I'll link above. Um, about the container diet challenge. And the container is basically just these little like pre-portioned containers um, that you follow, you eat so many, like it's all for the different food groups, you eat so many per day. Um, like I said, if you wanna check out that video, you can in your own time. But I did that and I followed it really strictly. I was just really, you know, really motivated. 
And I lost 10 pounds pretty much in one month. So I had started this, I think in November, like it must've been November after Thanksgiving, something like that. But I lost it in like one month. And I know because I have a picture of me um, at like a Christmas run that we did, a Christmas 5K. And I know I was 150 pounds then, like I just hit like my 150 pounds. So I was excited about that. Uh, but then holidays happened and I got off track and I kept saying I was gonna get back on the container diet again, um, but I just didn't for a while. And honestly, I don't know, I don't know how long I was at like 150, or, but it was a matter, definitely a matter of months. Um, and you know, during this time I was maintaining it, like I've never had a problem maintaining weight, but I had kind of just gone back to old habits, which for me, some of my worst habits were, you know, okay, I could eat pretty well during the week, but then the weekends would come and I would overindulge, overindulge on both food and wine. So those were bad habits that were kind of keeping me stuck in that plateau. Fast forward to, again, I don't, my timeline is so messed up because I, I'm looking at it now. I know I started in 2022, it's almost 2025 now. So it's just kind of crazy. I can't believe it. that's what two, three years has gone by. So my timeline's a little fuzzy, but like I said, I was 150. I don't know how many months later, I think I did the container thing again and I got down to like around like 145. And then again, I was kind of stuck at 145 for a while. I got off the container system. Um, I don't know, life happened. Uh, it, you know, it's all excuses, honestly, but that's just where I was at the time. Still working out consistently, um, but I just wasn't focused, right? So I stayed at 145-ish for quite a while. And then I got another burst of motivation. And I actually did a video on this too, where I did the container diet again. And this was, I guess, back in, I guess this was this past March or April, it must have been this, this past March. So I must have been, so yeah, it's been, I, so I must have been like around 145 or 150 for a long time because that was just this past March. Anyway, I did the challenge and I did the video, started at 146, did the container diet for like one month, got down to 141. Then we had family come in for my fiance's birthday and I got off track again, but I stayed kind of around that weight, like 140 to like 143, 144. But again, I had gone back to my bad habits of like, okay, doing pretty good during the week and then weekends come and I would just kind of like blow it all. Um, and that was, that's what was keeping me, you know, at that weight and why I wasn't losing. I just wasn't as focused. I just, you know, I was not in the mindset. Anyhow, fast forward, I guess from April-ish to this past July. And like I said, I was around like one, and it was in the 140s. Um, officially, I know on July 8th, I was like 143, 144. And that was when I just kind of had like an epiphany. And I was like, you know what, Whitney, you need to get your shit together. Like, I know exactly why I'm not losing weight. I kept, you know, I would keep telling myself before, like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I work out all the time and I don't know. I think that, you know, I eat pretty healthy except on the weekends, but I don't think one or two days, you know, really matters. Like it's okay to kind of cheat sometimes, but I knew I was lying to myself. Okay, I knew I was lying to myself, at least for weight loss. Maintenance is a different thing, but for weight loss, especially when you are not like heavily overweight, it does matter, okay? Those weekends, those cheat days, they do matter. So I finally just got real with myself. I had to get harder on myself. Actually, I think that same day I did a video where I gave you that same speech about how you need to be harder on yourself if you want to lose weight. Um, and it's funny because that one did, you know, better than most of my previous videos before. And again, I think it was just because it came from, because it came from just true, like tough love and just true, like get your shit together. And I think people resonated with that because I think we all need to hear that. And that's honestly what it takes to get to the next level. So anyway, yeah, started July 8th. It was just after like July 4th and we were doing all kinds of eating. Um, and I just said, okay, at this point, like, yeah, I I'm doing this. I know what I need to do. I need to, you know, cut the crap, had to stop drinking, stopped using the weekends as an excuse to overindulge, started tracking my calories and started being more consistent with my workouts. Um, I mean, I was always consistent with my workout, but now I knew they were actually counting because I was also working on my diet. And once I decided to do that, I lost like a few pounds, like pretty quickly. Like I went from like 143 to like 139 um, within the ma matter of like a week or two. I don't know what happened pretty quickly. And this was me, eating like 1500 calories a day. Um, that was my deficit at the time. 
and working out, doing at least like a 30 minute workout every day, trying to get some walking in. So yeah, that happened pretty quickly. But then by like the end of July, like early August, um, I, I was definitely in the 130s. I wanna say like 139, 138. Um, but this is where things started to kind of slow down for me. Like once I kind of hit this like weight mark in the 130s, I was still doing the 1500 calories, I was still working out, um, but it definitely slowed down. And I kind of expected it to, because I do know that like, okay, once, you know, you get closer to your goal weight, things will slow down because, you know, your your calorie needs just naturally slow down the less you weigh. Um, and it usually takes, it takes longer and it takes more work. But I just kept persisting. Like I just kept persisting with the 1500 calories. I kept persisting with my workouts, trying to get more walks in. Um, and then I guess it must have been like the end of August, had to have been, because I went to go visit family in September and I know I was like 133 around then. Um, but like I said, I was working at this for a, a while and I felt like the weight was coming off very slowly, but like I said, I persisted and eventually I did get to like around 133 um, towards like the end of August, early September. And also, by the way, let me just preface by saying that even from that time, from like July to August, uh, I was not necessarily perfect when it comes to like, my diet. Like I said, I, I was a lot better than I was before, but I did have, I think, a couple days where I ate more than 1,500 calories just because things happened or whatever. Um, the difference was, though, I didn't use that as like an all or nothing approach where I was like, oh, well, I had a french fry. I guess now I have to eat all the french fries and I messed up my diet. I guess I have to just, you know, go all for it and start tomorrow. Um, that was one kind of mindset I had to, you know, nip in the bud to. Um, so even I did have like a few french fries and I messed up and I didn't eat exactly like I said I would, it was not as bad as what I had been doing before. And so I think, again, that is the big difference or one of the big differences that helped me be successful this time. That and also just not drinking. Because again, at least for me, even the drinking, even if it was like, okay, one day a week, just on the weekends, drinking at least for me, you know, I always wanna eat whenever I drink. It just, I'm always hungry, always wanna eat. I don't sleep as well, even if it's just one glass. And I don't sleep as well, I wake up early, and I just wake up kind of groggy. So it's like when I drink, it's not like, okay, I'm just losing one day. It's really like losing two, because then the next day I feel groggy, um, I feel tired, I feel more hungry, so I end up eating more. So it can very quickly like ruin all the progress that I made the week before. So yeah, that was, like I said, another big thing is just cutting out the drinking altogether. But anyhow, end of August, early September, yeah, I was like 133, went to go visit family. Um, and then during that whole month, like this was when it kind of got like frustrating because during that whole month, I was, you know, sticking to the 1500 calories. I was trying to get even more like walking in, doing more workouts. Um, and it was still really stuck at that number. It really did not budge that entire time during that month, not for one month. And this is where I was starting to get pretty frustrated. Like I was like, I don't understand. Like I think I'm, eating like I was before and I think I'm getting you know even more exercise so what's the deal so then finally during this time too like I said because I was so frustrated I kind of took some time off um, towards like the end of September early October and it was just like you know I don't know a couple weeks two weeks three weeks where I just wasn't really focused on my diet like I was just eating normally I wasn't using it as an excuse to like binge I still wasn't drinking but I just you know, I wasn't in deficit. Um, I also got sick during this time, and this was like during a hurricane, so I was just off my schedule. Um, but I still maintained my weight. I was still 133, that didn't change. Um, and then finally, after all that happened, again, I got serious again, I was gonna, I started up again. But this time around, I decided to change my calorie intake. Um, so like I said, I've been doing 1500 before that seemed to work, you know, when I was 160 seemed to work when I was 140. Um, but it didn't seem to be working now. I figured because while well, I'm doing all this extra walking, all this extra working out, like I figured like, I don't think I really need to go lower than that. Right. It seemed like I was still in a deficit. But I don't know. I mean, I consulted a couple like different, like online, like, uh, TDE calculators. And some of them were telling me actually, no, you need to go lower than that. Um, so I was okay, you know, I'll try it. I went down by like, instead of making my, my calorie like goal, like 1500, sometimes 1600, I changed that to like 1400, right? Um, and then as soon as I did that, that seemed to help just a little bit. This was what back in October, like I changed the calorie deficit to like 1400. Then I did like 13 to 1400 was kind of like my range. Um, and that seemed to be working. Again, you know, 
exercise stayed the same. Um, really the main thing I changed was just, you know, a couple hundred calories difference. And that made a big difference. Like I started losing weight again. And then just up until like recently, like I did like about two weeks ago, I started a two week challenge where I was like 127 and you know, two pounds away from my goal weight, right? Of 125, but it just seemed like it was taking forever. Again, it was just taking forever. Even though I was, you know, working out more, doing, doing more walking, nothing was really budging. Um, so I finally decided to do this two week challenge where I was just going to get really serious again. And, you know, I dropped it down to 1200 calories. And like I said, I really stuck with it. I did at least 30 minutes exercise, whether it was walking outside or getting to work out. Um, honestly, this past week I ran, amped up even more. So I would do usually like my 30 minute workout plus like a three mile walk. I was really careful about sticking to the 1200 calories and lo and behold, it worked. I met my goal. It is now Friday, almost exactly two weeks since I started the challenge and I lost the last couple pounds. I weighed in at 25, I'm sorry. I weighed in at 125.2 and let me tell you, it feels great. It feels great to finally get here because it has been a long journey. Like, I feel amazing. Um, I feel like I look better than ever. Uh, my skin has improved so much. I think it's mostly just from not drinking and not eating a lot of the crap I was on the weekends. Um, I mean, I just feel lighter. I feel more fit. I feel more toned. I just feel more like me, you know what I mean? And it's just like this feeling of like, feeling unstoppable, you know? Like I know that I finally did it. Something that I've been wanting to do for years. If I'm honest, it's been like, like what? Over 10 years now that I said I was gonna do this and I finally did it. Um, so that's the thing, it's never too late. It's never too late. I don't care if it's been 10, 20, 30 years since you said you were gonna do it. Start today, just start today. I'm telling you, it's still going to feel amazing. But I also think that, you know, this story of my weight loss, more particularly this recent weight loss, is important for any of you who are also going through the same thing right now. Because there are, you know, quite a few things I learned this time around losing weight versus when I was a teenager and doing it. So number one to all the people who say like, oh, you know, your metabolism changes when you're older and it's harder to lose it when you're older, blah, blah, blah. You know, look, I can say that it was harder for me to lose it as an adult versus a teen. It was but I don't think it was my metabolism, or I know it wasn't my metabolism. Um, look, number one, it is basically already proven that your metabolism from like the time you're a teenager, right, to the time you're like 60, well, it's a little bit different for women. I think it's when women hit menopause. Um, but anyway, from between that time, right, your metabolism doesn't change. So this idea that people are always like, oh, well, my metabolism slowed down, that's why I gained weight in my 30s or 40s, or that's why I can't lose it. Um, that is largely a myth. I'm not saying that there are not other factors going on in your 30s and 40s that, you know, that can affect your weight loss. But again, just from the science, okay, don't take it from me. That's what the science says. And I can only speak from my own experience too in that the rate at which I lost the weight, I don't think really was any different than when I was younger. Like again, when I put my mind to it and I did the right things, I lost the weight. What I think was different and what was more of a struggle for me um, was number one, getting into the mindset to do it. Because I think that, look, when you're a teenager and you don't really have any like, cares in the world, it is just so much easier to you know focus on that one thing instead of like, all the other stuff going on in your life that can lead to emotional overeating um, or just the time, you know, like sometimes you just ha don't have as much time to work out or to plan your I think that was a big difference. I think too, and maybe even more of a big difference, at least for me, is the lack of the lack of movement and just the lack of like stimulation. So what I mean is like, so I do remember when I lost the last 10 pounds when I was a teenager, right? Like I went from 230 to 130. So at the end of ninth grade, I think I was like, I was around like 140. And that was kind of like my plateau around that time. Like I, I had been doing, you know, I had not counted a single calorie since that time. Cause I was just doing it from like, okay, eating better, working out more. Um, but then I do remember around that time, like it was just getting harder. Like that wasn't really working. Um, so it was the summer before 10th grade started where I decided to do, okay, I'll try this calorie counting thing. So I think I did like 1200 calories. This was over the summer. Um, I wasn't doing any crazy workouts. Like I was just walking or like, you know, jogging. But I remember the weight coming off like pretty quickly. Um, I definitely went back to school at 10th grade at, like, at my goal weight, like 130. Um, and again, I don't remember losing that 10 pounds as being particularly hard or even really thinking about it. Difference is, and I, I can say this for, as a matter of fact, is that I was a lot more distracted then 
as a teen. Cause again, it was the summertime. I was going out with friends. I, was, I had a babysitting job that entire like, you know, summer break. And I just don't ever really remember thinking about food much. Like it was just beyond like, okay, like, oh, I track my calories, make sure I was in my calorie goal. Um, but then I was just busy the entire time. You know what I mean? So whether I was working out or babysitting, I just didn't think about it as much. The difference between then and now is number one, I work from home. So I'm home all day pretty much by myself, just me and my cat, um, till my you know, fiance comes home. And I'm sitting most of the day. So that's another thing too. I'm, I'm not get, even though I exercise every single day and I go for a lot of walks, when I'm not doing that, I'm basically just sitting the entire time. Not only that, I'm sitting in front of the TV, which is in, you know, next to the kitchen. Um, and so being on a calorie deficit, when you are sitting at home, when the kitchen's right next to you, when there's no one else around besides the cat to keep you company, I think I just thought about food more and I just, it just felt harder, I think, for that because it was lack of stimulation. And again, like I'm sure, you know, everyone has experienced this before where it's like when you're busy and you're doing stuff, you don't have time to think about food, right? And like you probably realize, I'm sure we've all had those days where it's like, oh my God, it's been all day and I only have like a, a coffee and a banana for breakfast, right? And you don't even realize you're hungry until the end of the day. You know for a fact, for me, that was different. And also I think like the drinking and, and the partying um, made it a lot harder for me to lose weight as an adult, um, which is part of the reason, I, I mean, I know for a fact that why it was harder for me in my 20s to get into that mindset because I was still caught up in, you know, going out all the time. And even now, you know, when I took that all that out of the equation, I have not partied in like years, um, you know, it's still just difficult, I think, as an adult, because you have other priorities, right? The other big thing, that I think, and it may only apply to, it could apply to you, but I think applies, you know, more in my case is, I was getting pretty frustrated as far as like, it seems kind of crazy that I have to drop my calories so low to lose weight, to see any kind of movement, right, on the scale, because it seemed like, well, I'm working out all the time, like, I don't, I don't understand, like, even according to the calculators, I should be losing weight, and my watch, you know, my eye watch is telling me that I'm burning all these calories, but there is also the very real fact that, number one, a lot of people overestimate how many calories they burn when they're exercising. Um, and that can either be because they're not tracking, or even if you are, like me, like I have my watch on, it's only so accurate those watches really are anyway, because all they can really go off of is like your stats, like your weight and your gender, um, and your heart rate, right? And then they just kind of, they take that data from you and they you know compare it to other people around that same, you'd say same gender, same height, same heart rate, how many calories they burned, right? But the only really true way to know how many calories you burn specifically um, is if you are like hooked up to like a special machine and they do a test for you, right? So number one, like, the calorie counts you see on the treadmill or you see in your watch, that's only an estimate. And it might be, you know, very similar, but it's not always going to be exact. Number two is the other thing is look, if you work out a lot, like the more fitter you get, actually the less calories you burn because your body becomes more adapted to exercise because it can do it more efficiently. So you may actually, even though your watch is telling you that you just burned 300 calories on that run, you may actually have only burned like 200 calories. Because again, if you've been doing this for a long time, your body gets more adapted to it, it becomes easier for you, and so you just don't require as much energy to do it. That's why they say like it's really good to change up your workouts all the time, because it keeps your body guessing and you know it, it's harder for it to adapt. And I wonder if this was definitely the case in my case, because like I said, I am someone like, I am an endurance athlete. Like I am a marathon runner, I can walk forever, I can run forever. Like. I am really good at like the long, steady pace, right? Like that's just, I, I love that stuff, I'm built for it. But what I think, especially I've been at this for years too, keep that in mind. Could be different if you are just starting, right? But I have been at this for years. I have been you know, running for years, been walking for years, doing all this stuff. So I think that even though it's like, well, I walked six miles today, you know, I don't understand why I'm not losing weight, burn so many calories. Um, again, I think for someone like me, Honestly, six miles is not a lot anymore. And you know, I can tell because just in how I feel, like I don't, you know, it doesn't really phase me as much, as much anymore. Um, and I also think I probably was not burning as many calories as I thought I was. So I think that probably contributed to why I had to drop down my calories even lower to see change. But anyway, I wanted to point that out because I think that could be something you may want to consider as well if you are like, you know, kind of in my situation where you are close to your goal weight and you're finding it really hard, maybe harder than it should be. Um, you know, you just gotta keep tweaking things, whether it's, you know, getting more steps in, whether it's tweaking your calories, 
Again, it doesn't seem like, okay, tweaking your calories by like 100 would really matter that much, but it really did. It was the difference between me like staying stuck at a weight and then dropping like the last two pounds. You know, you just have to do what is best for you. Um, everyone's stats are gonna be a little bit different, right? Like, especially compared to where you're coming from, where you are now, like you may or may not have to even drop down 1200. Maybe you can continue losing weight at 1500, you know? I don't know. Maybe you can have even more than that. Like, you know, don't compare your stats to mine because they're very different. And especially if you are just starting and you're starting from a heavier weight, you definitely don't need to go down that low. It won't be as sustainable. You will still lose weight eating more than that because you are still much heavier. Also, if you are someone like me, you are in my position where you're, you know, you're at, you're, you're almost at your goal weight and you're finding it difficult, um, you know, make sure you are tracking your progress in other ways besides skill weight. Like this is something I wish I had been a little bit better about as far as like taking more measurements and taking more like before pictures and progress pictures because sometimes the scale won't budge. I definitely did notice this too. Like if, when I was doing a lot of like weightlifting um, and just lots of different workouts, like I tend to gain weight actually the next day. Um, it's not because of fat. It's just because when you're working out a lot, you know, your muscles need time to repair. You can actually just be having a lot of inflammation, carry a lot of extra weight. So that was something I noticed too, um, where I would look at like the scale, I'd be like, eh, it's not budging, what's going on? Um, then, you know, comes a rest day where I, I really don't do much of a workout that day, just kind of eat like normally. And next day, the, you know, the, the scale weight has gone down. And I think it's just, you know, due to inflammation, right? It's not like you lost two pounds overnight. It's just, you are more of your true weight that you are because inflammation has gone down. So yeah, make sure you are tracking everything properly and you have other means of tracking your progress because you're not always gonna see it in the mirror, especially when you get down to like this, like, you know, close to your goal weight and you only have a few extra pounds to lose. It's not gonna be like this dramatic reveal that you think it's gonna be, you know what I mean? Um, especially because you are just so used to seeing yourself in the mirror every single day. Like, it's kind of crazy because I was just telling my fiance the other day, I was like, you know, even though I've lost all this weight, like, I don't know, I just kind of feel like I don't really see that much of a difference until I took an after picture, put it next to my before picture, and I was like, oh, wow, like, that's a huge difference. So yeah, make sure you are taking those progress pictures, especially when you need motivation to see that it's actually working. I guarantee you, if you are doing the right things, it is working, but it does take a while sometimes to show up on the scale. Anyhow guys, I hope that this helps some of you who are going through your own weight loss struggles right now. Um, it's possible, persist, persist, persist. If you do not quit, you will not fail. I've been at this now for almost 14 years, okay? Cause like around my, tw yeah, around my early 20s is when I gained the weight, always said I was gonna lose it, did not accomplish it now until almost 34. I'll be 34 next month. It's never too late. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to feel awesome and look your best, but you have to persist. You have to persist even when you feel crazy, um, even when it feels like it's not working. If the, my one tip of advice for you guys, I can give you so that you don't have to wait 14 years to reach your goal is that you need to continually just work at it. You need to continually tweak things. Uh, don't keep doing the same thing over and over. Identify your triggers. If something is not working, if you keep going back to the same habits or don't seem to be moving, the scale's not budging, you need to do something different, okay? Again, for me, it was like tweaking my calories. It could be tweaking your workout. It could be, I don't know, moving to a new house, right? <laughs> like that's kind of what helped me gain the motivation. But whatever it is, you know, you gotta do it, you gotta change it, but don't quit. Persist, 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 okay? If I can do it, then you can do it, okay? 33 years old, going to be 34. It's not your age, it's not your age, it's not your hormones. It's likely because there is something holding you back, there is either a trigger holding you back or your own lack of accountability where you know what you're doing wrong, you know why you're not losing weight, but you're not ready to face it. Either face it now or stay fat. Do something about it. I promise you, once you do that, once you get real with yourself, once you get tougher on yourself, once you make the changes, that's when your body will change. That's when you finally accomplish your goal. And also understand that just because you reach your goal, the journey is not over. I mean, there's always a new goal to reach. There's always ways you can improve in your health and your fitness. Um, you know, if you want to, again, I 
me personally, I think that keeps me more motivated. You always have some kind of goal to strive for. So now my next goal for myself, now that I've lost the weight, I want to focus more on building more muscle and just getting even fitter just because I want to. I really like that stuff. Um, and you, I mean, look, you, you don't have to. Not everyone needs to like be like a, a fitness model or like a fitness like expert, right? You are happy with where you're at and you can maintain that through just walking or Pilates. Hey, amazing. Um, for me, like I just want another challenge. So that is gonna be my next challenge is trying to do more of like a body recomp. Um, I have been wanting to do that for a while. I just felt like it was kind of difficult for me to do that while trying to lose fat because it's just, they're just kind of totally different. Um, but now that I have gotten to the weight, I've lost the fat, now I'm gonna focus on that. Um, I will also do a loose skin update with you guys um, because I did do a loose skin video before, but that was back when I was like in the 140s. I will show you the difference between, you know, what I look like now versus then, um, whether you know me losing weight has made any of improvement. If you guys are interested in that, then stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.